How it happened, I don't know, but it just happened. Yo, yeah, what is going on, guys? Hope everyone's having a fantastic day today or trying to enjoy your work week as much as possible with that embarrassing loss on Sunday and a lot to go over. Uh, maybe not in this video because this is a whole different thing, but Shaquille Leonard has signed with the Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah, I'm actually shocked. I'm actually shocked. After the way we played last night, I wouldn't even expect, even expect that he would even sign here. And I told you guys, I'm not going to be all woo about this signing because at the end of the day, it's a scheme. And these players have to be set up to play in this scheme. Okay. Now it says sources, the Eagles and former, sorry, I cut out the Rappaport's tweet, but uh, the Eagles and former Colts All-Pro Shaq Leonard have agreed to terms on a one-year deal after he took a visit to Philly last week, a potential big addition for the stretch run. Leonard also visited the Cowboys, but Philly was always the preferred spot. So always preferred. I did see some news earlier today. Jos uh, Josina Anderson put some news. I'm told that right now the Eagles have some optimism. Shaq Leonard is coming to Philly. That's the extent to the characterization at this time. Uh, she said her understanding was the Cowboys have not received any indication of Leonard's decision as of early um, early afternoon per sources. And Mike McCarthy had uh, his press conference uh, today as well. Uh, said he heard no updates from Leonard's camp that he was going to Dallas. Okay. Now, there were rumors as well with Shaquille Leonard uh, the, from Shaq Leonard that the Eagles aren't even going to use him as a debt. The Eagles are going to use him as a debt piece. Like, they're going to use Shaq Leonard as a debt piece. They're not even using him as a starter. That's the plan with Shaq Leonard? I mean, does that make any sense at, at this point? I mean, God God damn, you're telling me that Shaq Leonard is not an upgrade to anything. Look, we look, the physicals went great when he went to Dallas, when he went to Philadelphia. You know, the phys I mean, he's healthy. He's good to go. There's no the doctors go into they the doctors obviously know his past, the, the two back surgeries and the neck injury and stuff like that. So you're telling me that he's not better than Nicholas Morrow? He's not better than Zach Cunningham, I don't know. Zach Cunningham has, has pretty, been pretty damn good. We're missing him significantly. No, no joke. Nicobe Dean's still on IR. But, but at least from what I know from Shaq Leonard's past as an all-pro, guy can cover, guy can shoot the gap, guy's quick. But in this scheme, it's going to be really hard for me to say that this is going to work out. There's already enough issues as as is right now with the the secondary and you know this secondary is being called out to one of the most uninteresting non-physical secondaries we've ever had. Okay, which we'll get more into that in another video because I definitely have a lot to say about that. But literally looking at the other news I've seen on Twitter today of Shaq Leonard and how they want to use him and like people are all excited about this signing yeah it's an upgrade i mean they're not treating this like it's an upgrade to the linebacker core as of right now they're not treating it like that at all okay so it says, regardless, this is from Josina Anderson as well. I don't have it on screen, but it says, regardless of what happens here, the Eagles, the Eagles' focus is still on the return of Zach Cunningham and Dallas Goddard this morning. I heard an emphasis of the impact of Cunningham's absence and generally looking forward to getting their tight end. The Leonard potential arrival would still be viewed as a depth addition. Seriously. You're saying that Shaq Leonard is behind Nicholas Morrow on this depth chart. Kind of hard to believe. Kind of hard to believe. I don't know. He could be worse, I guess, maybe. But at the same time, like, 
Could he be? Could he have worse tackling than Nicholas Morrow? Worse coverage than Nicholas Morrow? You're telling me that this man is behind. Is he even behind the Kobe Dean? They're looking at Shaq Leonard as a depth piece for this team. Makes no sense to me. They just want depth at the position, and that's it. So this whole bullshit that we were going through with the Shaq Leonard crap, sitting back, watching these two teams play. God knows why he picked the Philadelphia Eagles. So you're telling me he would have more of a starting job with Dallas than he would have a backup role with Philly, and he wanted to come to Philly this whole entire time? Now, I understand that Nick has connections with Shaq Leonard. Nick was the offensive coordinator under Frank Reich with the Indianapolis Colts when Shaq Leonard was there. So I get it. There's connection there. But to label Shaq Leonard as a depth piece when you really need this guy a lot more, it's a little troubling to think that Nicholas Marr was better than Shaq Leonard. But Shaq Leonard has dealt with some injuries and could his career be going downhill? What, what, how old is Shaq Leonard? 28 years old at this point. Going into every game this year with this linebacker core and not putting money into this position has potentially hurt this team. And it's starting to really take a toll on this team, especially this year in 2023. Okay? N'Kobe Dean can't stay upright. He's been on IR two times, out three times, missed a lot of time in the offseason, missed all of OTAs, most of training camp, joint practices, you name it. And, you know, we can't win with N'Kobe Dean this year. That's just a fact. If he comes back one more time, he's just a, a, a liability at this point. And, 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 you know, I hope that there is something there with N'Kobe Dean, but there's not much for me to go off of to say that I don't care what last year was. I don't care if the sample size he got last year. He didn't play in full games. He sat in the, the linebacker room with Nick Rallis last year and just watched pretty much and played special teams, okay? Not much to go over from last year, but guy can't stay healthy. You know, you're not your... Uh, your weakness is availability right now. Uh, that's a big problem. And Zach Cunningham, guys dealt with injuries in the past as well, but um, he's played fantastic. I think a, a, definitely a big re-sign candidate for the Philadelphia Eagles as of right now. Um, and Nicholas Morrow, I think, is the less of the bunch where I when it comes to you know a guy that had 116 tackles with the Bears last year has played in the size system back in 21. Um, you know, Nicholas Marr was a safety turn linebacker coming into the league, you know, so uh, you're dealing with a couple one year deal players. Now a third one comes in the fold for Philadelphia. And I'm not going to say that this is a waste of time, but this is well needed. I mean, this was well, well, well needed. OK, so now he's a Philadelphia Eagle. I, I'm sorry, but this scheme, um, I, I, I've never seen the most passive defense in my fucking life, and it's bad. Uh, it, it's really bad, and Desai is setting up these players to fail, and you're not using these players to their strengths, and uh, that's the number one thing you can't do with a bunch of players. You're 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 letting these guys defend an area and not be physical and it's it's undermining it's uh you know if you're not showing me during that 49ers game the 49ers went into this game as a battle i mean they came to war and we and we treated this game defensively like it was just a normal game with nothing behind it like, no urgency, no sense of urgency. It literally took the 49ers to literally throw Devontae Smith to the field, on the field, on the ground with the big Dom situation to really get this mentality going. We were lied to by Sean Desai. We were lied to, and unfortunately, Nick Sirianni wanted the same style defense as last year. He didn't want new blood. He didn't want a brand new defense. He wanted the same style of defense we had last year because it was a success. Even though our defense was a success last year and you lost in the Super Bowl because you got outmaneuvered, you got outcoached, you got out, I mean, you physically got betrayed. Um, physicality is not what we have with the Eagles this year. These guys rather push guys out of bounds in a perimeter and not, I mean, I see other cornerbacks just lay people out linebackers lay people out it's a soft defense 
Shaq Leonard is going to be put into a scheme that's not going to work for him. It's not. I mean, I, I, I think it's a waste of time for him. We're going to find out what happens, but, you know, how much of everything's going to be swept under the rug this week and say, ah, you know what, let's sweep this under the rug. Let's just flush this, this, this loss and, you know, get on with our lives, you know, and act like nothing happened and, you know, pissing me off, really pisses me off a lot. So I'm happy that we have him at least, that he's here. I mean, is this going to be more of a success at the linebacker core? No idea. Plus, he's, you know, he hasn't, you know, he hasn't played you know, in a, in a bit, and I don't know if he's going to st- – I mean, they're viewing him as a depth piece, and that's like a big – I mean, they don't even think he's better than what they have. That's a, that's a serious problem, unfortunately. So, other than that, guys, let me know what you guys think about the signing. Are you surprised? Because I'm shocked. The way the Eagles played against San Francisco, I am fucking shocked this guy even wanted to fucking come here still shocked over it. So, yeah. Guys, enjoy the rest of your day. We'll talk about this more soon. Check to out, follow us Peace out, guys. Peace.